Hi, you guys. I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing. And today I want to talk to you about something we don't often talk about, and that is issues surrounding a company in the place where it's located. Right now, Tesla's moving out of California. And this is kind of what you need to know as an investor. So guys, California is giant. What can I say? It's the fifth largest economy in the entire world all by itself. I mean, think about that. So how long will that last, right? What do you, what do you have to do in order to maintain the largest economy in the world? Is it enough to have good weather? Is that enough to make you the fifth largest economy? And the answer is obviously no. Greece has great weather, all right? And they're not doing all that well. Singapore has some of the worst weather in the world, and it's become one of the largest economies in the entire world. And it's an island about the size of San Francisco. So clearly there's something that goes on that creates great economic conditions for people to invest. And this is something that California may have kind of forgotten. And I think Elon Musk, who is there's, so, there's something just so wonderful about Elon Musk in terms of his willingness to break boundaries and shatter, uh, sort of shatter icons, right? And it's so fun to, to watch him do it. Obviously, you know, what he's doing with uh, the Tesla is just incredible. I mean, he's created, he's stuck a gun at GM's head and now all of a sudden they have to come out with an electric car. I don't, they would have never, they came out with an electric car and crushed them all. They, they brought them all back and crushed them. So, you know, Musk is amazing and, and deserves an enormous amount of credit. And he's leaving California. He's taking Tesla out of California, building a new factory and two SpaceX fa uh, fa uh, facilities in Texas. So he's headed for Texas. Now, we got to wonder what is the difference between Texas weather is worse than California weather. What is better in Texas that is causing them to move there? You know, why not Iowa? Why It's got bad weather. Why not, uh, you know, name your bad weather state? He could have gone there. So let's take a look at what matters uh, to a guy like Musk as an investor, somebody who, I don't know if you knew this, but Musk isn't the literal founder of Tesla. He is called a co-founder, but he got to that position contractually um, after bringing in the, uh, not the initial capital that was provided by the original founders of the, of the company, but he came in with a round of capital when they were struggling and a second round of capital when they were still struggling and then more capital. And then he finally said, look, I, I want to I want to be chairman of the board. And he got on the board and he said, I want to be a founder and I'm going to really take this thing over. And he did. And he made these guys very, very rich and they should be very happy with him. So he's an investor. That's that's the key thing to understand about Musk. He's a very, very brilliant investor. He's not necessarily a car guy or a spaceship guy or a tunnel guy. He's a hell of an investor, all right? So why would an investor go to the trouble of, and the expense of packing up everything and moving it out of the state? Well, I mean, you got guys like Joe Rogan. And by the way, if you haven't ever listened to Joe Rogan's podcast, you, you've got to go listen to Joe Rogan. I mean, this guy is amazing. Really love it. He's a he's a MMA, you know, mixed martial arts uh, pro. He's a phenomenal raconteur. He can talk to anybody. Um, he's politically incorrect, uh, which is fun. He takes whatever side of the thing he feels is fair. And he's expressing his frustration over the high taxes in California, the very high cost of living, which comes about as a result of kind of the economic uh, decisions being made in Sacramento. And even the politics just surrounding the COVID-19 pandemic, right? So first, some things to understand about an investing climate. Taxation, like most, if you want to get less of something, the idea is tax it, okay? And you'll get less of it immediately. Um, going back to Greece, they taxed income very heavily and got less and less and less of it. In other words, people stopped taking income in a way the government could spot it, right? This becomes an art form in some countries. So if you want to get less of something, just tax it. And ta <laughs> the tax rates on sales in California are now almost 9%. So when you buy something, they tack on nine, almost 9%. 
Not only that, but for people who have money, which would be the people that most states would like to keep in their state to pay those income taxes, they raise the income taxes to 13%. That's the highest in the nation. So imagine that somehow you're spending, you're in the 13% bracket and you're spending all of your money in California. Effectively, the state is taking almost 22% of your money right off the top. This is the state of California. Now remember the federal government under Biden is gonna move income tax back to 39.6. So call that 40 round numbers. Plus there's another little bonus that you get to pay for Obamacare. So it's like another three and a half. So you're at 43 and a half. Now add to that the 22 in California and you're at 65%. That means that the government's this isn't counting gas taxes at all, right? Or the taxes you pay on liquor, right? Or any of the import taxes, the tariffs that get added into the price of things. You guys, in California, wealthy people are, if they're working, are paying out all the money they make from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. So they're working until the end of August for everyone else, for all the infrastructure, for all the medical care, whatever it is that California has decided to subsidize. That starts to be a bit of a burden, don't you think? That you're expecting people to work for two thirds of the year and not get paid for that? That their partner, the state and the federal government are just taking it right off the top. So there's a problem. Not only that, but these counties in uh, California have gotten so, I guess, just so sort of fascist in their behavior where they would just arbitrarily tell a company, you can't bring employees into work, right? You can't open your doors. We're just going to determine that you can't. And Musk told these guys in Alameda County to shove it and opened his factory anyway and dared them to send the police to shut him down. And they backed off. I mean, you do it and they'll, they'll bring the cops, right? You, you open your gym, they'll bring the cops. You open your hair salon, here come the cops. But you know, the big guys operate under different rules. So Texas has no state income tax, which means there's 13% that people like Musk don't have to pay. That has to be a huge incentive, right? To get the heck out of California. Um, and I think their, their income tax or their sales taxes are lower. And you gotta understand that becoming, um, a country or a country, virtually a country that becomes complacent and becomes a, 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 a kind of a country that expects people to kowtow to the government is kind of where California has gotten. I mean, consider how insane and there's no other word for it. OK, another word for it is irrational, which is another word for insane. So irrational, the state government got with its utility Pacific Gas and Electric, PG&E. In the last 20 years, they put PG&E in bankruptcy twice. Now, this is a utility. This is a, a company that has a monopoly, effectively, on the energy in California. And they've gone into bankruptcy? How could they possibly get to bankruptcy? And the answer is the state government has demanded of PG&E that they subsidize all the green energy, right? In other words, they have to buy solar power at whatever price the California sets. They have to buy wind energy. They have to, and, and they won't let them put in inexpensive sources of energy like coal fired or, or natural gas fired or nuclear fired energy. And by the way, uh, run your whole company on that basis, which is impossible. And so what did PG&E do under two successive different CEOs? Is it cut back on maintenance of the power lines running through the woods, which set the woods on fire? which killed about 100 people, burned down about half of Santa Rosa, burned down an entire town. I mean, this is insanity at the state level, and yet they still do it because they're being sent there by people who don't understand what it takes to actually have energy in your country. So California's got a lot, a lot of places where they really got problems. They've got environmental regulations that prevent growth. In effect, what happens is you, you start to impact the the willingness of entrepreneurs to be innovative they just go what's the point i mean why should i risk capital if you're going to take two-thirds of it right off the top if i make any money screw it i'm just going to spend it on a boat in fact that's what they find is in times when 
Um, when there's too too much of a demand, too high of a taxes, when when London, when England put taxation rates on income up into the high 80s, if not the 90 percent range, taking virtually everything over a certain level, which even you know, sounds like sure, go ahead, they'll still work. Well, they quit working. These rich people, they just started buying Rolls Royces and yachts. And screw it. Why should I go to the trouble of risking capital? When I'm only, when I'm only going to get to get, keep 10 cents on the dollar if I actually make any money, I'm not going to do it. And they started spending their money on goodies instead of putting it into businesses that create jobs. So this is where California has fallen off uh, off the, the good, well-trod, beaten path in America, which is we have innovation, but we also have it because we reward those who are innovators. We allow them to keep the product of their effort and their labor. And, um, you know, that's how we get better jobs. That's how we get higher higher wages, that's how we get everything that we've got in America that makes us so wealthy. So how does this all affect a company, by the way? How does this affect Tesla's stock prices and investors, right? Well, okay, Tesla is a benchmark for vehicles that are electric vehicles. They're, they're what everything else is gonna be. And if Tesla stocks drops, then other electric vehicle stops are also gonna drop, right? So stocks are gonna go down together in tandem. So if Tesla's on your watch list, and obviously do plenty of research before you, you buy a company like Tesla, um, and you're looking at you know some kind of price you want to buy in at, which I'm certainly not going to say you should or shouldn't do, um, you want to be sure you understand what is the impact of taxation on Tesla in its new state, where it's building its new stuff. Is it going to make it stronger or is it going to make it weaker? And think about that it's probably gonna make Tesla stronger, right? No state income tax. That affects corporations as well as individuals. So here you got California making it tougher and tougher on innovation with higher and higher taxes and more and more regulations. Gosh, if you're investing in companies that are in California, are you making a mistake? Are you investing in companies that are already have the government's hand around their throat? I tell you what I'd like to see us do is push our legislatures Everywhere we, everywhere here in this podcast, push your senators, push your congressmen to get infrastructure out into the rural communities of America. This is going to be another revolution if they do it. That means like back in after World War II, they decided to put freeways out, you know, basically fast roads all through America. Then they electrified all of America. And then they put telephones in all of America. They gave out monopolies to force them to do this. AT&T was a monopoly to, to go out and put telephones everywhere in America. What we need now is fast, fast internet everywhere in America. And by the way, who's doing that? Musk is trying, right? He's put Starlink up there. We just, we just bought three of them in the hopes that we're out here in rural America in the hopes that we get this 200 megabytes up and down. Uh, and uh, and that's just from those satellites. In fact, we were Melissa and I were actually in a hot tub, sitting there watching the sky one night, and we just started watching these satellites go by. And it was like, holy crap! There's those low-level Starlink satellites that are going to be providing internet to us in the future if we want to sign up for it. So we did. So there's that. There's 5G. Um, there's potential fiber optics being taken out. But you should push every single government in America to push infrastructure out so we get fast internet speeds all over this country. And that is gonna disseminate the wealth in America faster than any other thing you can do. That will put virtually any kind of company virtually anywhere in the United States because now you can communicate from everywhere. So I would suggest you guys get a little involved politically there, which is why I wanna do this video. And uh, just keep cranking you guys as an investor, keep track of what those state governments are doing because it will have a big effect on your investments down the road. So what do you guys think about uh, Musk moving Tesla out of California? Love to hear your comments on that. And I'll be sure to follow up with you guys. Now, thanks for watching. Now go play. You guys, if you enjoyed this video and you feel it was valuable in teaching you more about Tesla moving out of California and what you need to know as an investor, how that impacts us, what we can do, hit the like button and please share the video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, subscribe to my channel, you guys. And don't forget, click the button on the screen. We got a free gift for you. Thanks again for watching.